Like most Mopar traditionalists, I've been a lifelong believer in the pinion snubber. If you've got a traction problem with your Mopar, it's either going to be related to your misuse or misunderstanding of the pinion snubber. But recently that changed. We did a podcast with Dave Dudek, and if you don't know who this guy is, you want to look this up. Dave runs a 69 Hemi Roadrunner in the Fast Series. It's a factory appearing stock tire. And these cars, you know, stock quiet exhaust, uh, no power adders, these things look like exactly restored cars, but they run hard. His Roadrunner is 4,000 pounds and runs 980s. And it does it on a stock size polyglass bias ply tire, right? Amazing, right? So I get a chance to pick his brain, I'm going to do it. So we're going through the basic setup of the car, and, and, and he's explaining to me all you know, little pieces, and it all makes sense to me. And then we get to the back of the car, and he says, uh, you know, all we use is just a set of low-performance, 3 to 3 two-barrel satellite springs, and a, a set of drag shocks, adjustable drag shocks. He says, and what about the snubber? He says, we don't use one. I'm like, How is that even possible? So he says, yeah, we tried it. He says, it slowed the car down to 10, 10th and a half, whatever it happened to be. We put it on, car slowed down, took it off, back to back, and the car picked the ET right back up again. How is this even possible? It set me to thinking. And listening to what he had to say and then going back and thinking about my own personal experiences with him, it dawned on me, you know, there is a time to snub and a time not to snub. And here's how it works. Well, first let's explain what the pinion snubber is. This is a stock one. This is the kind you'll find on any classic era Mopar. Uh, high performance, low performance, it doesn't make any difference. And this mounts directly above the U-joint on the snout of the rear end. And the purpose of this is, this is a limiter. The, the stock rear end is mounted with the pinion facing down two or three degrees. When you give it gas, the first torque reaction is for the nose of the rear end to come up. And what this does is it contacts the floor at about three to five degrees upward tilt. And that's to keep the drive shaft from getting into a bind position. The high performance pinion snubber, or the adjustable one, mounts the same way, but there's like a tower here and the snubber mounts on top of the tower. And there are holes and you can raise and lower the snubber by putting a pin through the different size holes. There's a second type too that uses like the top of a bottle jack where it screws up and down. And that brings you, your snubber into a position. So the idea behind this now is that with the snubber in contact with the floor of the car, that first torque reaction smashes the tire into the ground. It makes perfect sense. But here's where things go in different paths. If you use a hard sidewall tire, like Dudex Polyglasses or any modern street tire, street radial, with a, with a hard sidewall, that first torque reaction pushes down on the tire, but because the sidewall can't give, it actually lifts up on the rear, and that negates some of the weight transfer. The other thing, too, is if you've got a stick car, something that leaves exceptionally hard, that stiff sidewall tire will actually rebound before the car gets a chance to move forward and brake traction that way. A soft sidewall tire, like a slick, will use the pinion snubber to push down on the tire, increase its footprint, and as the car rolls forward, the weight starts to transfer over and the car sticks. So the short answer of it is, stiff sidewall tire, no pinion snubber. Soft sidewall tire like a slick, pinion snubber. But now here's the thing, if you're gonna use a pinion snubber, the snubber it all by itself is not a magic bullet. There's a package that goes with it. And I'll explain that real quick, right? We'll go from the back to the front. So your first thing is the leaf springs. You want to unclamp the rear segments of the spring. The spring needs to be free to fan out as the front of the rear end comes up. The second thing is a longer than stock shock because you need to have, be able to have the rear end drop out with no resistance. So a lot of guys with B-bodies will use, like, the, 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 the Chrysler Superstock shock was a uh, one from an Imperial, from a Chrysler Imperial. Moving forward, a lot of guys take those clamps that they took off the back and add them to the front. This has dubious value, but the idea is to keep the front segment of the spring as stiff as possible. On a Mopar, 
that short front segment of the leaf spring is the best traction bar there is. Now, continues to the front of the car. Three elements at the front of the car. We talked about this in one of our previous videos. The first is a 90-10 or dead shock absorber. You want no resistance, no upward resistance to the front. The second is a thinner than stock or, or the thinnest torsion bar that will work on your car. And the reason for that is that the thinner torsion bar has to be twisted tighter and when weight starts to transfer back it unloads quicker and springs the front of the car up. And the third is to remove the upper bump stops. And that allows the wheel to drop out of the well a little bit further before its weight starts to inhibit the car's rise forward. So essentially that's it. It's an integrated package. If you're going to try to use a pinion snubber, you've got to use all of those elements or it won't work. And that's it. Mopar Traction Voodoo explained.